Bo? Yeah. Let's make history. Hello, welcome. It's hard luck time. How are you, Bo? I'm so good. Me too. Ask me the question. Who do we got today? Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you who we got today. First ever Grammy winner on hard lore. Can you believe it? No, actually. That's crazy. Neither can I. Grammy winning engineer, producer, fit for an autopsy, better lovers, and friend of the show, mm. uh, the the godfather of modern metalcore, I call him. The the crap the, the blacksmith of modern metalcore. He's been he's at the smelting pot he's forging, forging iron. Yeah. yeah. Will Putney. What's up, boys? Thanks for having me. Oh my Hello, god. Sir. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Great. Great intro. What a fucking intro. <laughs> Puffed up, ready to go for this now. Puff that know? chest for me. Yeah, I yeah, want you to a yeah. little, <laughs> You're the chess guy, dude. Well, yeah, no, more no. of like a it's more of a hamstring guy. Oh, know? okay. Calisthenics. You can, like, you can yeah. leg calisthenics. You can bust you know? those yeah. out too if you want. A lot of stretching. A lot yeah. of standing. <laughs> well, yeah. where are you at right now? Are you at new studio or old studio? I'm at uh, I'm at new studio. Old studio is R.I.P. It's totally well, not technically not. Old studio is Steve Evans's studio. Now, okay. So. Oh, okay. cool. It's yeah. cool that it you know had, uh, remained in a way from yeah, king from cool. king to king. Yeah. 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 We're. I was very happy to see that stay alive with Steve. It was awesome. Good timing for both of us to make a move. So, so wow, that's great. awesome. Well, that's really yeah. cool, man. Um, you're welcome. This is a long time coming. Um, first thing I want to really talk about is just the sheer volume of work that you do. I was looking at your discogs today. <laughs> okay. You, you tell okay. me if this number sounds right. <laughs> 436 credits. Does that sound right? Jesus. I don't know. That's crazy. Um, yeah, that might be right, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're busy. I'm not complaining. I mean, I am complaining, but I'm. It, we're. Uh, this is like my dream job. Got yeah. the opportunity to do it. Worked it up so I can get the chance to work with the type of bands I want to work with. So I'm going to do it. You know, I, I wasn't... Um, I, I was never one to kind of sit on my ass. We if, if cool shit came along and it was something I felt like I had to do. We just figured out a way to do it. So we, we've we made a lot of records here. Now, when you say got the opportunity to do it, how did you get the opportunity to do it? Um, I think it just came from zero to 10. You know, like for me, I, I, I was lucky to get in working under a producer early. Um, I worked with Machine, mm -hmm. who at the time had just come off of Lamb of God. And he was like one of the dudes in this world for sure. And you know, I, I was like his intern and sort of like got my chops up learning from him and then start doing my own local bands, start writing my own records. That's what I was going to ask. So were, were you already doing music prior to that? And you were like, were you playing in bands before you were recording them? Basically? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I was, I started playing in bands when I was like maybe 14. Yeah. We just hardcore bands around here and stuff. And I had always had a band. And had always tried to do stuff in that world. I booked shows. I tried to run a record label. Like, I, I was involved in music, but it was always like, um, you know, it was always like a hobby. Passionate thing that I would just do for fun. I was still going to school. I was actually in college taking music classes for fun. Same kind of thing. And Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so the career path was never this. It was like, oh. I'm studying to be an engineer and... Um, like taking science classes and this was well, like, like an engineer game. engineer like chemicals yeah, like, and yeah, shit. Like math and Biomed shit. biomedical engineering oh. was the was where i was yeah boy it's a different <laughs> funny how life works out yeah. but um you got the easier <laughs> engineer job yeah yeah i was just i was interested in studio stuff i had made a couple records going you know with my bands and i always thought it was fascinating and yeah i just didn't know it was a light like a career to me it was like <laughs> like an even an option yeah mm -hmm. it was like my band suck i'll i'll starve to death if i try to pursue <laughs> this like so i i guess i'll do science and then uh this will just be for fun you know and then it like once i saw a door open where i was like oh shit i could actually this guy makes a living off of making music that i like mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. let me figure that out then i just w I went hard that way wow. you know I do recall like early days, even with our bands, when you would go and demo something, it was just that like, oh, we could do it at my dad's house. Yeah. I mean, it was exciting to like, 
I, the first time you recorded yourself and heard it back, like on a cassette. I mean, I don't know how old yeah, everyone yeah. is here, but on a cassette tape or something, and played it back, and you're like, "Holy wow!" I just did that. Like, yeah. I rec- I'm I made a recording. You know, it's like um, making fire, know, like, cool. like a caveman making fire. I yeah, have I was always fire. drawn to it. You know, so yeah, and then it became real. So I just I just went all in on it. Are you are you from New Jersey? I am from New Jersey. Yes. Let me ask you this. As, as like I said, the master, the godfather of the modern metalcore sound. What is your core of choice as a listener, especially as a New Jerseyan? My core of choice was, ooh, okay, so it's changed over time. Sure. But my ed, my entry to hardcore was E Town Concrete, <laughs> Fury of Five. Second and none, that era. Oh, yeah. That's the sweet spot. There he is. <laughs> now you're speaking to the heart, brother. Yeah. So that was like years of my life was just like the New, that New Jersey hardcore scene. Late mm-hmm. 90s, you know, turning into the world of like Shattered Realm around here. Yes. I played in a band called Nothing Left to Mourn, which had some of those guys in it. So that, that was course. like the world I was in. You know, I grew up on the like, you know, my I think my my like seminal records would be like, all at war for those who were crucified, yeah. like that era of like the crossover stuff when that started to happen, and that was my that was my shit. Um, I knew I liked oh, you. <laughs> yeah, and now we got something I mean, special going on. <laughs> yeah, E Town has a will always have a special place. <sighs> that's for me, that's you know? fucking the Michael Jackson of of New Jersey yeah. hardcore in a way. You know, yeah. in terms of sheer yeah. <laughs> Michael wonder, Jackson of hardcore. You know, <laughs> I love it. Shout out to Ant Money. Shout out. I don't know if he's a listener, but love the guy. They're vaguely familiar. They're you know they're com- They'll be on the show soon. E Town episode coming soon. They had a. I love that. <laughs> they had a a great quote when they won the the single of the year award. It was, "What do you want me to say?" <laughs> love that. Um, yeah. So you said it evolved. What do you What are you into now? Uh, so I I've over time that world changed a bit. You know, I think. Um, this is not a knock on on younger bands, but the stuff that emulated that hard stuff over time became, I guess, because it was very real and very scary around here, and it kind of got less scary over the years. And I got drawn to inherently darker music that just sounded scarier because, mm. like, no show shows weren't as scary, so I started to enjoy music that sounded scary. Gotcha. So sort of like the art hardcore and power violence and like into the grind stuff that sort of became like more of my sweet spot but mm. anything that was like stuff that kind of picked the pace a bit like I was, i'm a big turmoil guy mm. like where i was like okay this is still hard but mm-hmm. it's like a bit more dissonant and progressive sort of faster pace yeah and now and now it's like now i kind of like what I, I like everything now <laughs> i've definitely um I've learned to let go of like uh, feeling like I have to stay in a certain box with any kind of subgenre. I imagine you have to as an engineer and producer. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was years of just like give me the brutal shit. It's all I care about, and then I sort of, you know, I don't know when it flipped in life. Maybe I had a breakup or something. I got sad or <laughs> something. You know, like I, I don't know where the uh, I don't know where that flipped in my head, but I just started absorbing everything. Well, you know? it's interesting. Think, um, it's interesting to think that way too because you're. I would say your catalog is so associated with a certain style as opposed to an E-Town style or like anything that we've been talking about so far. But it took a while to get there for it's, sure, uh, of, right? of course, but I, it's just like I'm sure people don't realize the, like the the background of Will Putney. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the, the first record I made ever was this band Suffer the Living, which was half of the Shattered Realm dudes uh. from Jersey. And then... Shortly after, I made a Banner record, which mm. was like that same series. So this is like those; those are like the first records I made, you know. Oh, okay. Um, and I was like dead set on b- doing a hardcore band full. T- like at the time, me and what the original version of Fit for an Autopsy was, we were trying to do a hardcore band in that world again. Um, and we just happened upon a singer who leaned more into metal. We're like, oh, let's try. Just try to do a metal band. Maybe that'll be fun. Have you, you know, had the singer, the same singer, the whole time? No, we have. We replaced. Uh, we've had the same singer for about ten years. Okay, now, yeah, but I mean, the original guy. Crazy. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure he he'll love to hear that. He loves <laughs> to hear. He's awesome. No, I, Joe's great. I love Joe. He's a he's he's just a monster vocalist. Yeah, he's got it. I see what you're doing there. 
When did Fit start? How Fit started like yeah. kind of about 2006, 2007. Okay. Like kind of off of that band, Nothing Left to Mourn, that mm. we were in. Um, and we were just, it kind of started around the same time I was making records. Um, and, and even like our first demo is one of the first things actually made at the studio. You mm. know, like Machine mm-hmm. let me use the studio in downtime and actually cut the four song demo that started that band, you know. Cool. Um, and was that, and would fr- you say the Fit for an Autopsy demo was one of the first things as an engineer where you were like, I think I'm pretty good. At, I might be. I might be good at this. <laughs> I mean, I don't think any of that stuff is good per se. But I think, I think sonically, I don't think any of it was good. But I think I was starting to understand how to make songs that affect people sure. at that point. You know, I just I barely knew what I was doing. So to say that it would be awesome would be crazy. You know, but um, <laughs> people people probably liked the songs that were coming out of the studio more than the production for a while. And then okay. I think it caught up to itself. When af- do you think it caught up? What made it catch up? I what? don't really know. I just kept doing it. Was there a record that you heard that final mix and master of that you were like, this is, you know what? This is good. I mean, I know <laughs> early on I did, um, I did American violence, the rain Supreme EP. Oh, okay. And yeah. that was like, it was like one of the first records kind of that was outside of, it was like not a New Jersey band. It was like one of the first records that kind of outside of um, my, my local friends and space around here. Mm-hmm. And Is that the sticker, did, like, the sticker one? Yeah, okay. the sticker one. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah. sounds and awesome. That, and that reacted good. And people were like, who did this? It sounds awesome. It was like one of the first times, at least in like this world, where I saw like, oh, people dig the, like the way this sounds, too, gotcha. not just like what the band is. So that was a good early one for me, and I feel like that turned into um, when was that? a lot of s- stuff. Man, I don't even know. Like Probably 2008, 2000, 9? 2009, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere it had to have been there. seven or eight because yeah. I had the shirt in high school. and I Makes sense. So, you know, it was a good yeah, shirt. I think 2000. Yeah, but yeah, that was like, that was an early, like, kind of win for me. And I think um, it was cool because uh, it was like my first. My first go meeting Jay, I was a big Blacklisted fan. And of course. And that, me and Jay have been friends for like, you know, se- ever since. He plays an end. He's, like yeah, it's bandmates like, now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now now it's like full, it, it was a really cool full circle thing to do a band with him after that and stuff. Well, you and I recorded together, which we'll get to. But, and, and through that time, I kind of gathered what the backstory was, but we didn't really dive into it. We were busy. <laughs> we were busy. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you're, when you're, you know, um, do you have fit going on and you're recording a bunch? Like, is it becoming, are you getting too busy? Like at what point does it, is it like, Oh shit. Like this is my career. Like recording. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely had moments where I was like, shit, I might be taking on too much. I got to figure something out. But I, I like 10 years ago, I saw myself out of touring full time with fit. It was like, Mm. we're going to get another guitarist for the band. And if I can't make a tour, I can't make a tour. And now I just don't go on tour. So that. 10 years ago, because it's like, 2014. Yeah, they're, they're, the so Tim, who's like yeah. in the band, because we're like a band with six people, yeah. you know, and they tour as a five piece. Um, he's great. He's fantastic. I, if I got on stage, I'd probably make it worse. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, it It created this thing that that just works unbelievable on its own that I don't have to interfere with now, you know. And like creatively, I steer, I steer the ship and... I manage the band too, so I, I handle a lot a of lot. the wow. vision that is that band. But I just can't do the touring. Yeah, you know, it would have cool, been one or the other. It's a cool you know? model, though. I'm, I like the. the it's dynamic. a great model. Yeah, because if you're writing, then who fucking cares who's yeah, writing? Yeah, who gives a shit? <laughs> it's yeah. cool. I it's it was weird for a minute because yeah. I was like, man, I don't know if I like I'm watching my own band play a show. You yeah, know, and yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't know how I feel about it. And yeah. I was like, well, it's this or it's nothing. You know, and I I love the guys in the band, and it was like I didn't want to have to leave the band mm. you know and we had this conversation where i was like look it, this was like the fork in the road with the production stuff too for me where it was like i'm now getting asked to make records all year and the band's getting asked to tour all year i can't do both things right. so what do we, what do we do you know yeah um and you know they rode with me and they're cool with the dynamic and it's like turned into this beautiful thing for everybody that's so, amazing you know that's so awesome and and so you said the band started around 2006. When did you start re- recording even as a hobby? I'm trying to figure out how long it took you to go from hobbyist I to... Did, t- I didn't record as a hobby. I started recording in a recording studio. Right. I mean, that's... Shit. I, I, didn't, I didn't know shit about recording <laughs> other than 
what I had seen with my bands and I had taken a recording class or two in in school for fun and mm-hmm. uh, it was you know I I was uh, I worked at this I had a little internship at this place called the Syndicate it was like a radio mm-hmm. promotion thing they used to manage they managed like um Shadows Fall and Poison the Well okay. and oh, cool. a, a bands like that back in the day it was just something I was interested in they and and um the class the recording studio that I had the class at and that company all shared a building with Machine the record <sighs> producer so like word I, I, they knew that I was really into the stuff he was doing because gotcha. at the time he was doing every time I die and Lamb of God yeah, and yeah. like oh it's you know it's, I I saw Sepultura demos on his desk one day right. I was like what is happening here? you know <laughs> um, but all this stuff uh, all this you know word got back to him like hey there's this kid around he's like pretty dialed in to your world so he had a kid and needed an intern to kind of just start babysitting bands at a studio at his studio while he mm. had some downtime. Wow. And he's like, hey, do you want to do this? And that that was just the start of that relationship. And what, what time? Like, pure time, to place, and time. What year was that? He's like, it was uh, probably 2005, maybe. Yeah, so like Somewhere nine in there. years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I didn't know anything. He's like, you know how to use Pro Tools, right? Uh, you just got to demo this band. They're just going to jam while I'm home. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> that was just scrambling it was mu- it was a couple months of just scrambling to be <laughs> just lying, <home>. but <laughs> just to hit the threshold of like a sucky intern, okay. you know. But Holy shit! I sponged it. I sponged up quick enough where it was like cool, and I think what he did, which was like a beautiful thing that I learned and apply that to when we take on people, is he didn't care about the technical stuff. He was just like, I just want to be around musical people, mm. and I just want if someone's gonna work at the studio. Like that shit will come later. He just wanted to see that people had that sort of brain, you know. Right. That's he sick. just and, and he was just like, "You'll figure this stuff out." I just like that you're musical, so we'll we'll get there, you know. And we do the same thing. Like when we get kids, uh, you know, if we have interns or assistants, I'm I'm less concerned if like they went to Berkeley or they worked ten years in this other recording studio. It's just like, hey, here's some music. Can you? Is this in tune? Can you hear this drum fill? Can you okay. hear that? It's just like I I just want to see if people are musical. So he caught you know? up on the the like you kind of knowing the unteachable things already. And that, yeah. that was and enough to was, know he could teach you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where it started. And then within a year, I was just like in it. I mean, that's I awesome. was that's all I did. I would sleep at the studio and hmm. I'd work for him for like a full day in a studio. And then when everybody left, I would just stay up and try to figure out stuff on my own. And really? It was, it was a crazy time. Were you working? Like, did you have another job at the time? Also? I had like, I had like bullshit jobs just to yeah. pay bills, but I was yeah. like, I was in a, cause I had school bills and then I had like, I was living in Jersey on my, like in like apartments, which is expensive. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I would try to like bartend or work at coffee shops or try to make money booking shows, which I don't know if you've ever booked shows, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> don't do that. All right, yeah. I made 83 yeah. bucks. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would, um, I would just scramble, you know, to try to just make ends meet while I was like getting all that done. Cause he, you know, he took care of me a little, but it was like, dude, I didn't, you know, I'm an intern, I don't know anything. He's not going to like, you know, I didn't have the salary. Oh, that's of course. the purpose or, of an intern. Is so of course. He doesn't yeah. have to do that. Yeah. So it was rough. I mean, i it was, I learned not to sleep and it was, it was wild time, but, um, <laughs> we got through it. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah awesome. you did. Before yeah, we, did. before we get to bands and, and stay on bands, I want, I have some, uh, some rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Hit me. So, so get ready. All right. Okay. I'm ready. Best drummer you ever recorded. Ooh. Best drummer. Ooh. That would be Arik from the band Night Versus. Night versus not a, not a hardcore band, but more of like a prog metal kind of band. But um, he's a freak. He's like one on one. Good job, definitely Mark. one of the best in the world. <laughs> wow. They're on tour with Tool this summer. Well, so there you it's go. Like one of those. There bands. you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tool hears you and goes, "That guy's pretty good." And you're probably pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, have you ever sent a band home for not being ready? Uh, yes. <sighs> we don't have to disclose yeah, we, the name. We never get into yes. that, but God, that is. That gives me chills. It yeah, sounds so dude. bad. Oh. oh, it's terrible. But it, it happens. And it's happened more than once, for sure. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes, oh. you know? Yeah. You ain't ready. All right. Uh, have you ever had a trigger or edit a drummer's performance so heavily that it might as well be a robot playing? Yes. Perfect. 
Sure. And yeah. band you're dying to work with. Oh. Ooh, dying. I want Metallica. That's the one. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> and That's, and yeah. let me let me tell you, Will, I want you to have Metallica. Yeah. I'm, I want to have Metallica too. I'm gonna, come I'm gonna in there try. And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna try next time. Come. I think I I think I'm gonna actually try. I, yeah, I say this I, respectfully. <laughs> Metallica needs you. Yeah. It's, Dude. So I want Metallica because of the like room for improvement thing that I feel like I could yeah. bring to the table. I mean, Metallica is one of the greatest bands to ever exist, mm. but they're not, you know, 25 yeah. year old kids anymore. Yeah. So it's like, no, they need... just put somebody young in the chair, even if it's not me, just yeah. put yeah. just put a young person around. Yeah, they need Bo Rock um, to, to get in yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> fix them up. Bo yeah, Rock. I want <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would, man. Metallica, if you're listening. If you're listening, yeah. Um, Lars, Get Will if you're listening. Man. Will, he's qualified. Okay. Because let me tell Thank you, you, you don't Appreciate have to, it. when you write a song, Lars, if you're listening, <laughs> when you write the song, you don't have to do the whole song twice. Twice. Every yeah. time. You know what I'm saying? You barely, you can do one and a half verses. Done. Done. You but don't, anyway. you don't like, you don't like five verses? <sighs> You, you know, verse, like verse I, I, I was just talking last week, I think, about how, like, you don't even need verse three. No, you literally you don't. don't. No, you don't. Verse three needs to be bridge. Verse three, if you're going to do verse three, you got to, like, it has you got to piss all over it and make yeah. it be like, what? What? It's yes. covered in piss. <laughs> yes. The piss take. Exactly. I mean, I miss the classic Metallica bridge. They don't do it. They just do. Ver they just do another verse. But all the old records that had the seven, eight minute songs, mm. you had a journey. Half Dude, through. I mean, it's just you those know? are the best. <laughs> when you think about all right. the song, we're not, here, we're not here to disparage the greatest no. band to probably no. ever exist. But when you think about Master, and you think about the dun 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 dun, dun, dun building into the solo into the like. That build and that payoff, which is a direction that you couldn't see coming. No. That's what makes the yep. whole thing. That's beautiful. Yep. So a, it's just they need someone to tell them that. Someone yeah. to tell them the they need that you. when they yeah. put a, a note for note Lenny Kravitz riff in a song, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, that it, doesn't, it. it doesn't need to be there. But no, it's fine. Will, I think the it's job fine. is yours. You know they Thanks, covered man, that song, it. Colin. Dun, 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 dun. They, so at their icons performance, they cover "Are You Gonna Go My Way." So maybe it was like an intentional bit. I think it kind of was. Because I heard that and I went, "You took this man's one riff." Yeah, it's a cool riff too. <laughs> yeah. You took the only riff it, he's got. Anyway, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> Good right, question. So for an autopsy, like let's start there. The journey so far. You know, the band started in 2006. How did how did you find each other? Other than nothing left to mourn. And what were the first couple tours the band did? Um, so, yeah, most of the band start was from Jersey. And then we hooked up with a lovely fellow named Nate Johnson. He used to sing in this band, um, Dead Water Drowning, and uh, spent some time in Three Eyes of the Dead. And um, he wanted to do a new band. His bands had dissolved at that point. He had a buddy, Seth, who was also in that band. He played in the Casey Strain for a bit. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want to do a band with this guy. And we had three of us. And we're like, okay, let's just do it. So we kind of like hung a bit, demoed, wrote stuff. That was that first four song thing. Um, did a record pretty quick after it. Wound up getting picked up by Black Market Activities, guy from the records uh, label when mm -hmm. he had that kick in. Okay. Um, and it was fun. We were like in that space, doing a lot of shows locally with the bands that were on that label. Ar uh, architect, the network, that kind of like more chaotic stuff at the time. It kind of leaned to what the band was doing. And then um, we sort of started getting some tour opportunities. I know the first tour we did, we tried to do our own tour. Didn't go so well. Then we did a support tour to this band Molotov Solution, mm -hmm. who were good buddies that were like more more leaning into that deathcore space. And were they stuff. from and, Vegas? Yeah, Vegas band. Wow. Yeah. And then um, second record... We wound up signing to another label and um, kind of leaned a little more into some of the classic metal influences. And it started to pick up. We started to see a lot more opportunities outside of just like noisier bands and stuff. Was and, this Good Fight? Was uh, yeah, E1, Good Fight, E1, good like fight. that era of stuff. Yeah. Um, we did a couple records on there. Band just grew steady. Did a lot of stuff in the deathcore space just because by default that was just 
sort of what um sure like that was what was popular, like what we could tour with, Suicide yeah. Silences and White Chapels yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, then uh, we signed a Nuclear Blast. We're on our second record there. Band sort of evolved into, we're trying to just be a proper metal band and okay. do more stuff in that world. So we spent the past few years doing things like We Have a God and Kill Switch tours. And, um, you know, we just finished a headliner with Exodus and Dark Sour and Undeath. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. So now, you know, we're we're we kind of play between kind of play between both worlds and trying to figure out what's next, but it's been like uh we're never a hype band or anything like that. It's just a thing we grew slow and steady over. You know, I, I always say if you're like if you're a band without a gimmick and you can just be good for 10 years, yeah. then you probably figure it out. Like then yeah. something something probably cool should happen by then. You Look know, at I feel like you're and shit, you know. It's yeah, like, right. If you if you rock so hard that you like Mashuga rock so hard they don't have to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Just some lights and fucking play a riff. But um, yeah, we want to be we we want to be a lights and play the riff band. You know, yeah, I like yeah. it. Hey, um, yeah, yeah there. Everyone's getting older and like fuck it. We're you know that's that's where we're at. And uh, every you know it, it's good. Morale's high. Everybody's fucking stoked on doing the band still. Creatively, we're in a good place and. Awesome. Yeah, I look forward to where it's going. Seems like you have a good, tight knit group of people in the band. Yeah, we've all. I mean, these dudes have. We've all been together for a, a while now. You know, I mean, everyone who's in the band's been here for at least ten years, and mm. everybody knows each other and what the what each other's flaws and things are, and it's good. You go through your band therapy stages, yeah, of course, and the growing pains and stuff, and then you're just like always on a page, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's nice when you get there and you're like, all right, it's like I could tell these dudes how it is. Everyone could talk shit to each other without it being a problem. I don't know. It's yeah. Just you everyone's just a that. grown up, you yeah. know. Yeah. You gotta have the, and you, know, I think, you gotta have a, a little roast, roast sesh. Every now and then, <laughs> mutual. Yeah, roast I don't sesh. know. You beat. You'd be surprised how many bands don't get to that level with their communication and shit. Like, because you know, I've, I've had every version of a band through the studio, and there are some bands that just like don't know how to talk to each other. It's crazy, and man. it just makes problems. You yeah, gotta dish I'm, out wedgies every now and then and keep mm. keep it keep each other in check. Yeah, mm. I'm sure you know how anyone who's like a real dude just like wouldn't have time to deal with shit like that. No, you, you know, give so you I, give out some wedgies. Will I give out some wedgies? Okay. Yeah. Who's the wedgie Little guy in, for, for an autopsy? Who's getting the wedgie? No, no, no. It's like group wedgies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not like a literal wedgie? A circle yeah, wedgie. Nobody, no, oh, okay. we, me, yeah, nobody... Because Anthony gets wedgies all the time. I'll yeah. tell you what. <laughs> me, and, me and Pat, who's the guy Who's the guy I started the band with, we've had, we've, we're have we at each other's throats from time to time, but we're like brothers, so it isn't like, uh, you know, we'll scream at each other and then call each other and be like, all right, so tomorrow we got to do this thing. And, you know, <laughs> so like that's kind of happened. like a sibling relationship almost. Like, yeah, fuck it, you, what's for, it's, what's for dinner? It feels more like that, yeah. Fuck you, what's for Beautiful. dinner? Where did the band name come from? Is it like a sexy corpse? No, and I hate the band name, honestly. I tried to change it <laughs> so many years ago. It, the band name came from a band that wasn't even our band. We we It was the original singer's old band. We didn't have a band name. And he's like, well, we're not going to do that band anymore. We're like, oh, fuck it. Let's just use that. This will this won't affect us in 20 <laughs> years, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's fine. I, I, when I say I hate the name, people are like, no, it's not that bad. But I could see that they know that it's bad. You, you know? No. I think, yeah, it's that. Ah, oh, dude, it's, it's not that bad, you know? Sexy but, clubs. Um, I get it. It's cool. When people ask where the name came from now, we just say death was taken. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> So like fit for so it means a body is now ready for an autopsy. I'm just trying to actually dig into what the yeah I guess the that it means, means that a person is dead. Yeah, in a sexy is. way. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I don't get the sexy is, thing. But like if fit, you think like a it's fit sexy, bird, fit bird. Oh, fit like in shape. You know, she's fit for an autopsy. My God. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fuck. I never looked at it sexy. All right. Damn. All right. You look Damn fit good. for an autopsy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's gonna follow you maybe now. Um, uh, yeah, death already taken is really good though. That's so great. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So let's just go with that. Yeah. yeah. When I when I say favorite tour in terms of fit for an autopsy, I know them days is over. Your torn days is over. Like Forrest Gump. Right. What 
What comes to mind when I like the one you think about and you go, you know, that was awesome. The cool, I mean, the first tour, the first tour I did with the band was the coolest. Wow. Even though it was like, even though it was bullshit, it was <laughs> like we we were on tour with our friends. This this band called Bassinate from New Jersey, and it was the it was like my first tour, and I'll always remember it as being, holy shit, I'm on tour. Like yeah. this is insane. It's, you know, it's very um, pirate ship. It's very like. Here we go. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's very very fun. The early ones. Yeah, it was just something. I think because I never thought I could do it. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it always just seemed unobtainable to mm. me. Like fuck, man, I'll never be in like a band that goes on tour. I got too much shit going on, or my band's not good enough. That that was just being able to fit, do it, and get home. It was such an accomplishment, and mm. we had so much fun on that run that it was just like I don't know. It always has a special place. Beautiful. Tell me about the Grammy win. Grammy win was weird, man. It's fucking strange. We've so, been, uh, uh, I've been up for a few, and I didn't think uh, this was not the one I thought we would win. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, I, I did some right? stuff. Yeah, I did some stuff with Gojira that got nominated twice, and then I did the previous Body Count record got nominated, and they got invited to play. They do like a Grammy pre-show, right? Where they give out all the like less popular awards right like right. best metal performance and like best jazz duet and whatever you know yeah so that, and it's it's like it was at the garden and it was sick and we went did the sound check and they're get they're playing and then they tell us like um you know we're sitting at the award show everybody goes up to perform and they tell us okay after body count performs everybody go right here because they're about to announce your category so we're like oh shit they're putting us like right next to the stage. Like we're 10 feet from the guy who's announcing like the, the awards. And they're like, okay, everybody stand right here. We're like, holy shit, I think we won. <laughs> and then they're like, and the award goes to Mastodon. And then we get ushered off like the hook comes out. <laughs> and we just get ripped off the stage. And everyone was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Like, yeah. But um, so I was like, all right, if we didn't win that one. Right. Um, you know, that was that was the shot. We're never going to win it. And then, you know, fast forward, like, to the next album. It's COVID, and we're like, uh, I didn't even watch the Grammys because, like, I don't know, some fucking crazy world event was probably happening. I was just, everyone was at home, and they were, like, uh, live streaming the Grammys and stuff. And then my phone starts blowing up, like, yo, Body Count just won a Grammy. I was like, how? What? <laughs> you know? But that means and I, was I like, won a Grammy. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, shit, okay, that's cool. And yeah, and yeah. then I went back and, you know, and I was like, well, let me get a clip from somebody, you know? Um, <laughs> so I, I wasn't, I really wasn't expecting it, especially, like, I mean, the, I don't remember everybody that year, but I know, like, Power Trip had a nod that year. Yeah. I was like, they're going to fucking win this. For a live like, they, song, when, that, this is how, like, weird the Academy is. Like, they put out a song that year. Yeah, the, the and live they, I version mean, was nominated. I don't know. The choice I'll ne- I'll never fully understand it. I I I've uh I have a little insight into how the Grammys work and I still don't I think it's not quite put together. Sure. It's it's not the most in touch all the time, but I mean, it was cool. It was still cool to see a band like that just be nominated. Yeah, I agree. And then I was like, well, we did a song with Riley like on yeah. the Body Count record yeah. and they chose and, and they chose, and it was like a single too. And like, there's a video with Ice and Riley and stuff. And I'm like, just pick that song. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. The whole thing was like um, surprising, but it was uh, like, it's cool. It's like the type of thing where like your mom's proud of you and it doesn't really change my life, but it's definitely, I don't know. I never thought it would happen, hmm. you know? Hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. I appreciate it. I don't think, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it happens again. I feel like that's a one. Who cares, we'll dude? Say. Even you, the nomination yeah. asterisk is like something yeah. you carry forever. Fuck yeah! Did you get any cool, uh, any cool swag, gift bags, or anything? I got a plaque. Yep. It's a very nice plaque. <sighs> and then um, I was told I was getting one in the mail, and then it just never showed up. So we'll see. <laughs> Amazon's yeah. got them. I'll send you one. Yeah. Well, they said uh, Ice is going to make me like a. He's like, I got a fake one for you. I made for like my homies. I'll. I'll get you one of those. Dude, nice. Let's talk about Ice T for a second. Yeah, can we? Yeah, he's the fucking best. <laughs> that's, just, that's the best news. <laughs> I I'm now on my third full rewatch of SVU, and let me okay. tell you, let me tell you, Will, I love this man. Yeah, he is. Um, 
he is a treasure, an American treasure. How did um, they find you? I was, uh, I did a lot of work for a label that signed him mm. and my buddy, uh, Sean Keith, who now runs like Sharp Tone. They were looking for a producer because, like, we got to reinvent Body Count for modern times. I haven't put a record out in a while. Right. He went to bat for me. He got me the meeting with him and everything. So I, like, I guess he had talked to a few people, but I kind of, I think he liked that I understood the lineage of Body Count, like Mm -hmm. what it actually came from. I don't know if he had connected with another producer that sort of knew the world, where it was actually from. Gotcha. Um, and so he w- so that's that's like kind of what got it done, and then we just started working together and haven't stopped. It's been great. You did know? you write? Have you did you write a, a good amount of the stuff on both those records? I mean, I'm pretty involved. They they take care of me like a like a band member, you that's know. Awesome. Um, as like a they I I know they definitely value my creative input and stuff, and I'm handsy with the band for sure. But it's like uh you know it's like ice a lot of it is ice's vision. You know, yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. it's like um, the storytelling and what he wants to do and the type of songs. Like it, it, a lot of it just like goes through his lens. Did you, you record know? the suicidal cover? Yes. So the Xbox lines and stuff. Oh yeah, I would have fucking, I would have screamed. I would have been like, yes, I was, yes, I was <laughs> dying, dying. He's making. I'm I'm vegan and he's like writing parts making fun of fucking vegans and then laughing at me like the whole dude it's he's the best. That's awesome. That That's so is cool. there could you give me some insight on some some kind of modern hardcore metal bands that he's into? Oh. Uh he lo- I know he loves Power Trip. He's Core. pretty big on um I've showed him like I I've showed him stuff that was like adjacent like oh you should check out like Terror, you should check out I know he likes Straight from the Path cuz mm. that's got rage similarities and stuff mm-hmm. like that um he's pretty big into like the new york hardcore stuff that was like his i think because that's kind of that was partially his intro to that world too but like yeah the, the ice pick track like a, he's on my god yeah he'll get down with a mad ball record he's 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 a jamie jossa fan you know like he's so cool. he kind of lives in that east coast shit too so i think yeah. that's why we you ever bond. hear this you know what i haven't done hmm. i haven't showed him e-town i feel like dude I should. you got it I, yeah, I know. That, I will. Next time I see him, I will. Have you heard the Six Feet Under song he's on? Yes, I have. That's one of the that may, that might be, and this is a spoiler for when we do a uh, best guest spots episode of all uh, of all time episode. <laughs> that might be number one. <laughs> is that it, it was is Chris Barnes always in Six Feet Under? He yeah he's that's it's like that's yeah his that band, was his right? thing. Wow wow. And it's even yeah, he it's play- more apparent because when I start singing, you're like, God, can't I just have this? <laughs> just do this. <laughs> anyway. I love it. Anyway. Body count. Wow. Grammy winner. Unbelievable. Uh, do you have plans to work with them again? Yeah, we are like uh, kind of in the middle of a new one. So I'm almost, almost done with it. It's been a bit in and out because uh, the writer's strike. And oh, right. It, yeah. it, you know, for body count's cool. In a, it for him because he only does it because he has it's fun. He doesn't need to do body count like the dude's clearly yeah. got his yeah. his main gig and stuff. Yeah, and which, what a gig which is, is awesome. What a gig because it just makes it so pure and fun. Yeah. But it also has to take a back seat when it's time to like of film course. television shows and stuff. So, you got like, SVU spoilers? It's been, <laughs> you get them early? No, no, I can't be doing that. No, no, no. no. Do you have Maybe a favorite moment, Colin? What do you say? Do I have a favorite what? Favorite SVU moment, dude. Oh, I mean, I know, okay. Man. So there's a there's a John Mulaney bit about Ice's character, uh, Detective Odafin Tutuola, and it's basically <laughs> like in in every episode, <laughs> there's a moment where where Finn, who has been a detective on in the Special Victims Unit now for better part of twenty years, yeah, which is the whole thing is that it's sex crimes, right? Like that's the thing. That's what they do. That's the show. And there will be a thing where it will be like a pedophile, you know? Yeah. And, and Finn will be like, hold up. You telling me this guy gets off on touching kids? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. Yes, yes, Finn. <laughs> and that, yeah, I s- <laughs> every time that happens, or also when a, when a, when a criminal's like making an escape, yeah. you know? But Ice is like body blocks him from, from, from leaving. And he's like, yeah. I don't think so. Those are my, <laughs> that's why, that's what keeps me coming back. <laughs> oh, that's good, fan. It. I like when what the uh, the district attorney lady, the blonde lady, 
She they're, like they're both blonde. Wh- Alexandra Cabot or Casey Novak. When when Alex <laughs> when, when one of them disappears and one shows up. Like, but, but then, cause we Cabot think the, the, disappears and Novak shows up, it, but she doesn't really die like that thing. It's yeah. Awesome. I loved that part. There's a couple of those. Yeah, I know. It's good. It's a good show. <laughs> spoilers. That's few spoilers. Maybe the greatest uh, procedural drama in the history of television. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's talk about end a little bit. Sure. How does what, this, uh, how, what do you want to know? How does this multi-regional super group come to be? And started as a thought for me, um, I'd worked with Brendan a lot with Counterparts. Yeah. And um, uh, for fun, I was like, hey, you want to sing on the a Fit record? Because we, like we were recording around the same time. And I was just like, yeah, maybe I'll try this new heavy voice thing. You know. And then I hear Brendan for the first time do some kind of low voice over like down two guitars. And I was like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> and that just... Banked that for for six months, and yeah. I was like, "Fuck, I kind of want to hear that again." Um, I I mean, honestly, it was um the way Fit was headed. The band was getting more like kind of traditional metal, yeah. And I found myself being pulled away from it when I, I'd go sit down to write a song, and I feel like I was throwing the kitchen sink at songs because I want all this like dissonant, chaotic, hardcore shit because that's just my shit. Ah. And then I'm I'm writing music and I'm like, yeah, but now it's like losing its way and this sounds like two bands. And I was like, what if I just do another fucking band (laughs) and lean into this stuff? You know, because that is like at the time when N started and it's kind of still is, it's sort of like my, that's like my sweet spot for when I want to listen to aggressive music now. I like Mm. the grind and power violence stuff Mm -hmm. and, Mm-hmm. Always never got to do a band like that. And um, so I just called up some people that I had worked with or were friends with. And I was like, hey, if I do this band and I convince this guy to be in it, would you be in it? <laughs> and then like, what if I got, what if I got this dude to play guitar? Would you sing? Like, you know, and yeah. that's, so I kind of, you know, Jay from Rain Supreme, yeah. Yeah. obviously, because I knew he, when at, towards the end of Rain Supreme, he was starting to really lean into that stuff too. He was like trying to go that way with Rain Supreme a little bit. And, hmm. um, Greg, who's a, I met working with Misery Signals, who like wasn't doing a band at the time. We sort of we have so many parallel interests with heavy music. I was like, man, he'd be perfect. And um, this dude Andrew, who we were friends, you know, it came together as just people who I knew like this stuff that weren't doing it, sure. you know. And it was like a thought experiment almost first, where I was like, even if I just get this out of my system, we do an EP, put it out. I don't know what the fuck will happen with it. Um, so everyone, everyone like kind of knew each other or knew of each other but we like met at the studio i was like oh, just wow. make a fucking record right. you know um and it was cool we all and became like great friends real fast and um that ep did did all right uh, we started getting asked uh, to do I would say shows it was wildly successful yeah a little map. better than it was fucking yeah everywhere. it was cool because it was like it wasn't a joke but it was not a band like it was never it was not serious it was like we, the music was serious but it was like we're just gonna make this thing and then go back to our day jobs and then it went good and we're like fuck okay let's do stuff now <laughs> with it um so you know start touring playing shows writing records and, and it's like snowballed now you know i obviously we're real into it now um you know especially me and greg like because we are like this is our outlet for this kind of stuff we want right. it. creatively it's one of the most fulfilling things i do you know and i i love making those records i love playing those shows and it became like a, a cool reason for me to get out of the studio too. Cause that's the first project since right. I stopped touring with fit where I'm like, cool, I'm going to go back on tour and stuff. Yeah, how do they feel about that? Mm. Uh, they, they give me shit for it. They <laughs> gave me shit for it. Oh, that's cool. You're going to tour your other fucking band. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. And now but, there's um, a third one. Yeah. Now there's another one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think when we did post human, I think end was like, you were talking about it. Yeah, it was like it was baby, like baby inception. That was yeah. the inception of N was right around then. Yeah. When what was the writing process? Did you write everything, or was it you and Greg, or was it me and Greg are pretty? We're we're pretty hand in hand on it. Okay. We'll do. I'll do a few. He'll do a few. We'll do a bunch together. We'll fuck with each other's songs. Cool. We're kind of both like it's very collaborative with the two of us on that. It's like our baby, you know. Um, very cool. And I loved. I love writing with him. It's awesome. Tell me about working with Justin. Justin's great. He's like the guy in this. He's the guy. Like, I don't want. Yeah, I mean, if I, if you're a hardcore band, he's the guy who should put your record out. He just lets you do it, full artistic freedom, and he's like 
I always call him like, dude, uh, what do you think about if we like did this and i know it costs more but like sounds great i love you yeah, yeah, it's, like, yeah it's great yeah so let's do it i wanted to ask um, you the the new record art is one of the craziest things i've ever seen oh dude the layout oh, thank you yeah what yeah. crazy fuck thank you yeah we were like i just want i mean i like packaging i've always <sighs> been a vinyl guy and i was like man let's just go fucking crazy on this we've spent enough energy in this record where yeah. I wanted the visual component of it to just have that. that I want to, I want to know the cost on so, that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, he would, I, I got the opposite reaction. Well, not, I mean, knowing Justin, I thought yeah. he would be stoked, but I was like, I was calling him to convince him that we should do something insane like this. And then he was like, dude, I'd love it. It's awesome. I can't wait to do it. I was oh, that's like, oh, his okay. dream. Yeah, that's, that's his dream yeah. is to have bands who care enough to be like, can we do something different? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and uh Alex is the guy who did it. He's just on a whim. I hit him up and I was like, uh he he had never done an album cover. Mm. He was just like this, this this visual artist who had done these three D things and I was like, Hey, I'm in this band and blah blah blah. Mm. He's like, Yeah, I fucking love it and this would be awesome. I was like, You act the fact he actually knew the band too and was in our world, I was like, just by chance we were able to get out of the box with a new artist who kinda liked the band. I don't know, it was just Really cool collaborative thing that worked out great. It's one of the most striking album art layouts that I've seen in recent memory, for sure. Like well, it immediately it. We grabbed. Spend some energy on yeah, it. So it looks thank awesome. you for uh, well done saying that. Tell me about making Posthuman together, guys. <laughs> Tell me some stories. Posthuman was great. Posthuman was great. What do you got? Um, I we all speak about it very fondly because it was the first time that we went and stayed so so the way graphic nature or machine chop or whatever at the time it was graphic nature right yeah the way that it was was there's there were a, a, there's a live there's like multiple booths and a live room upstairs and then like bunk rooms and a kitchen in the back so we went and lived there for like 3 weeks ish and it was the first time that we had ever done anything like that so it was like very cool, very exciting. It was also the first time we did real pre-production where we sat with Will. We had sent Will demos that we did in Madison or Milwaukee or something. We sent him them. He had notes. Then we just played through every song with Will right there and like went through every song. And, and he added the becoming become a machine breakdown. Right? It was it was Will's idea to go back into the the that I guess it's the verse. Or is it? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's the verse. <laughs> and, and yeah, make it's, it no, it's kind of the yeah. chorus. <laughs> but then the chorus is dun 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 dun. Become a machine. You know, it's, maybe it's a it's the refrain. We'll call yeah. It. We'll call so it, it was. Like it, we had an ending just on the wing and fade out. And it was Will's like. <laughs> How could you do that to me? I think we should go back into that. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, broke my heart. No among, problem. Uh, Happy to help. Among Happy other things, we also wrote "Last Man" kind of with Will. Like all together. And that's like second or third song, right? It's the second song. Yeah, we wanted something because, you know, the first song is a little longer. So we wanted something kind of quick and upbeat yeah. to kind of break into it. And and yeah, I just, uh, it was, dude, I'll, I'll never, it was like we would wake up, have breakfast. We would go to Steve's around the corner, get some eggs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and go and, you know, track or record or whoever was doing what that day. Finish up. And we would always eat with Will during the day. Finish up, go work out, cook dinner, and watch Game of Thrones. Rinse and repeat every single so day. So just summer camp. Literal summer camp. And it, and it was like such a cool experience and so fun. It felt like and it was the first time we had done something outside of Chicago, outside of Bricktop. Right. So it just felt new and fresh and exciting. And and Will was very patient with us. Will also um, tracked guitars with us in a way that I had never done before where – and well, I mean this with all due respect, but he was when if if Colin, hold up your air guitar like you're tracking. Hold up your real guitar like you're tracking. Okay. My real Dunable <laughs> yeah. R2 V2. Yeah, yeah, that you love to play. It feels so good. Yeah. Will's mm, shout Will's, out to Dunable. Yeah, look at Will's, that Dunable. Will's looking at you and watching your hands and making sure that you're playing it right. And then like also muting strings for you behind your fretting hand. To make sure nothing's ringing out. You do that. You do all that. Yeah, I get in there. I'm. I'm very. Uh, he's. I'm a giver, dude. I want he's the a good guitar performance. Player. You know. 
He's a so guitar player. Up, <laughs> oh, okay. You, you're behind me going, don't hit them fucking bottom. Don't hit the... Don't hit yeah, the, yeah. He'll, he'll lightly mute it. And also, will the way... The, the, <laughs> that's, the way that Will um, tracks stringed instruments is so enjoyable mm. as a guitar player. It's like, run through the song. Run through the song again. We'll run through the song again. Of these three takes, we got it. Oh, and that's he good. Makes an amalgamation of the three, generally yeah. speaking, and... It's just so like there's not a lot of stress. The pu- there's no like punching in where you're going to kind of p- perform differently. Mm. It's all very natural and and I just I loved it. I, he has a great selection of guitar heads. I had a great time. <laughs> well, that. what do you so remember? Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Yeah, I, don't know. I was gonna say, Will, do you like this? You like Harm's Way? <laughs> no, I love Harm's Way. It was a blast. Harm's Way is one of those bands where it was like the vision was so clear mm. that it makes the record so fun because. For me, like half the battle, not half the battle, but it's like what I consider one of the most important things is like I want the whatever I record, I want it to have its own identity. I want it to be yeah. unique, stand on its own. When you hear a band, I want you to go, oh, it's that band. Like I know uh, that's their sound, that's their thing, you right. know. And these guys came in with like a vision that I liked. And it was like, man, I don't have to like pretend, I don't have to like cook something up or we don't have to find that. It was like, fuck yeah, we're doing this. Mm-hmm. We all agree. We're on a page, you know. And then it, it, it kind of makes it so fun because everyone's working towards a common goal. And right. um, it was, yeah, it was a great experience. Everyone's good, knew their shit, rehearsed. They're a real band. Now, how uh, often know? does that happen versus a band coming in and saying, just make us sound like Knock Loose, please? I mean, it depends. I don't, I, I think I've been lucky lately where it's been bands that have their thing you know i feel like anytime i there seems to be a pattern if like i do a record and it kind of pops or whatever that then i'll get called for like hey uh can you do that thing you know yeah. and um yeah. well then that's I, a testament to your work absolutely so. no it is it is cool and i'm very flattered and i'm i'm more so prefer to like take on mixes like that but if i'm like going to produce a band i'm like well you do your thing I, you know yeah. i don't why do i got to copy their thing exactly. that's their thing don't so you want to hear you to, yeah yeah and, and so now i kind of i kind of try to just do like yeah okay i did, i like i do these knock loose records so like i don't want to do another band that sounds like that right. cuz it's i've like i want to give it to them you know yeah. and and um and i feel like you know I, over time, I've just been like, yeah, I already do a band like that, so I'm not going to do wow. this. Yeah, or, you can be you know? a little choosy. And it's helped. It's helped yeah. like focus for the bands that kind of rode with me that when they weren't the big band or anything like that. And it's like, well, you you earned that that care. You know, I feel very like, uh, I feel like I owe a lot of my success to bands and the work that they do too. So I don't take it for granted that I'm just going to, give that to somebody else, you know, after they kind of put the work in to build that sort of sound for themselves too. Did you do, uh, low teens? I did. Yeah. So that was a big, now that I'm remembering, that was a big thing that was like, Oh, he did every time I die's record. Low teens sounds very different Mm -hmm. from, I think their prior records. And you did, did you do the one right before it? Will? I did Low Teens and Radical. Those Ra- are the two. Oh, okay, Radical. Um, low Teens, I think, was a, like a sonic departure from both like stylistically a little bit and also just like sonically. It yeah, just, the production. Like, the production was so off. fucking cool. And that was like yeah, a huge, you. that was a huge push for us to want to do Post Human with Will. It's because we That's really, cool. really like the way that that record sounds. We really like the way that the drum sounds sounded on that. Mm. And um, I think that that's like a testament to like that's a, every time I die was a band that was super established and had their thing and was was very much in their lane and who were always willing to kind of try other things and like try to be different and try to like, you know, do their be every time I die. And that record is kind of one that stood out for me. And I think that that is a testament to what you're saying is that like you are in a, in a position now where you can be a little choose more picky about what you're trying to produce and what you're trying to make. I think that that's like the coolest nice. position you can be in being a producer, you know? It is nice. It's made me sleep like a baby at night <laughs> because I've been on the other side of that where 
you take a money gig or you take a band just because you need to, you know. Um, and then I I just like live to regret it almost every time, and it's it just it just eats at my soul, and I don't know, it's not for me. You remove the passion, then what's that's and then it's yeah, then it's it just, work. It's if no I have to be convinced to do it, it's like I just know I'm not gonna. I'm not all in on it. I'm not going to do the work yeah. the right way, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on graphic nature being haunted? I, knew, I, tell, I knew it. Uh, <laughs> I knew this was coming up. <laughs> okay. Before the haunted, can I give, can I share one harm's way story? Please, Cause please, I don't know if Bo knows. Please, this is like God. one of the, this still lives as like one of our funniest moments. Oh okay. um, shit. They, I don't even know if you know this. I'm, I'm in, I'm walking into the kitchen. Okay. And I'm I, I'm being quiet. I don't know. Maybe like somebody was tracking in one of the rooms or whatever. And I could walk around the kitchen, and I was just like seeing if anyone was around. And I see James at the table, <laughs> and he has a 24 pack of eggs open <laughs> at the table. He's just sitting there and he's just staring at them. And I'm like, he's just fucking staring at <laughs> eggs. Like, is he doing? And then I'm like, I'm just so I'm like just watching James watch eggs for a quick second. And then I'm like. <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? And he's just like, oh, I'm like, Yo, are you just are you just looking at eggs? And he's just like, yeah, I just really like eggs. And he just goes back to staring at him. I was like, all right, cool. And like to this day, if we're like at a diner or something, it's like, do you want? It? Yeah, I just really like eggs. Wow. Like it still oh, makes rounds hey, all the time. I need to say, at, at the day of recording, it is James' birthday today. So happy birthday, hi man. You'll happy hear birthday, this late. Happy love birthday, James. James. Hope you get some eggs. <laughs> hope you get. Hope you have all your eggs today. I, I wonder guy. what happened to them eggs. Whatever happened to those? Well, they got eight. Oh, I could tell you. Uh, they got eaten. Okay. Yeah, dude. Tell you what happened uh, to those uh, eggs. Something. Something that would happen is is Nick would would drink a little bit. He'd get a little little tipsy, and then he would just be like, "Hey, who wants to eat?" And he can cook. He was vegan at the time. Mm. He could cook eggs and meat better than I could. Wow. He, he's a really good cook, and he worked at, at a, a a co op where he cooked professionally. And like, <sighs> dude. Every he man a needs wizard. a fucking line cook in it. I love dude. that. Yeah. yeah. Nick Chef Nick, in a band is yeah. a is a treat. Line Very cook, nice. riff cook. Nick is, yeah, yeah. is the complete package. Good, everybody okay. needs you need one you need one or the other. <laughs> Nick had this cool um ability to make every song major too. Do you mm. remember? Dude, that? it's crazy. I, I really yeah. do. Have we talked about yeah. safe space on the record or on the show, Colin? I think we have. Yeah, safe you, space. Yeah. Safe space. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You won't let us play it, but I understand why. It's got to be yeah. on the the deluxe reissue in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Big thing is unbelievable, space. dude. Yeah. He's talented. So I've heard. I've firsthand heard stories. Brian Garris shared. So a story. have we. Yeah. It's on the show. And it's documented in it's our documented biggest episode ever. To us, will. So I, you know, we didn't experience anything, but I would love to know. So uh, to, to there's Colin's been question. rumblings yeah. that the studios haunted i uh mm -hmm. up up until it was i've heard about it for years and i was like yeah i don't know whatever i don't really see anything i'm here all the time um and i've heard it from several bands obviously the 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 naku story is pretty well documented mm -hmm. i uh i never put a ton of stock to them. i'm like oh, it's just bands being silly it's all good um one day <laughs> i'm writing an end song and the power of kind of does the dip thing. I was like, that was weird. That never happens. Okay. And then the radio comes through uh the guitar. And it's and we we're talking about somebody who was going through like a hard time right before it. Me and Greg were sitting there writing and this radio station just starts playing. And it's a lady who goes, Are you going through a hard time? God cares for you. Are you going through a hard time? God care and, we're, and I'm recording. Luckily, I'm like, I got the button going, and this comes through through the rig. I'm not even in an amp, so I don't know how I'm getting ground noise. Like, I'm in a plug-in in a computer. Yeah. Yeah, that's impossible. On. And it's I'm like- Not impossible, uh, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and it's it's fucking on the end record. It's the start of that song, Hesitation Wounds. Wow. Right. That's literally like some spooky thing that just popped in the studio, and I just remember recording it and going- 
fuck, man, you're just fucking haunted here, huh? Like, I was just like, Wait. I, I actually had one. So now I'm like, all right, maybe it's a little fucked up here. I don't know. Belleville's crazy. They used to make war shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Dude, now, so you're I, telling me the S, the Will Putney STL Tone Hub pack available now <laughs> is, is part of the haunting? There, um, it, I was haunted through it. Mm. That so seems it's impossible. I don't know how it happened. I, it isn't was it, it's in the amps no. that pick up that frequency. I Not, know. That's why we're uh, to this day. I'm like, that's never. I've never gotten radio through a pedal into a plugin before. It's never happened. Bo, oh, that's irrefutable. I dare you. Uh, what was Brian's? Was was it not similar? It was the power, and then power a radio went thing? off. He and had then the power. He had the recorders. power thing. Yep. He had yeah. the power thing. They heard the sound. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Hmm. I don't know. Jury's out, but I will I'll tell say you what. That like I, late, at, <laughs> late. The cool thing about the the studio too was like. Well, when when would you usually clock out? Like five, six in the evening? Uh, no, probably later than that. I think. I think well, it depends. You're right. You would go until you're right. My, my mistake. So basically, when we were done for the day, Will would go home, and we were just kind of left to our devices there. We could like go and go upstairs and practice and play and like do whatever we wanted at full volume because it didn't. That's all that was there, you know. Yeah. And the area that it was in, it was like totally normal, and. I will say that like when the lights were all off and when it was dark, it was just a spooky, big old room for sure. So like yeah, walking from the, the bunk room to like the stairs to leave is definitely like a kind of a thing. <laughs> Taking for sure. out the trash at night type. Exactly. Feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't miss, I don't miss much about the spookiness. <laughs> I'm in the woods now, you know, Yeah. And, and it's like nice and I got mountains in nature, but there was mm. definitely something to the unsettled nighttime vibe there. Well, I mean, you got the Blair Witch around you now, so I wouldn't get too yeah, it's, comfortable. Yeah, I'm in, like, uh, hereditary what's that red light over there thing Oof. going on over here. Mm. You know, yeah. How's the new studio? Are you loving it? I love it. It's awesome. Is it done? Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's always, everything's a work in progress forever, you know, yeah. but um, we moved here in, like, right before COVID, pretty much, and just kind of turned it in converted space into studio space living space or bands and everything and so cool. i mean it's awesome the I, living I, space I fully can maximize time and uh that yeah. it's just so much chiller and there's more room and stuff mm. it's it's been awesome making records here the living space for bands thing is so fucking cool it's such a yeah. huge bonus if and when you get to utilize that because it just takes away from everything it's you amazing. can literally just only focus on the product. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I love the like move in, isolate vibe. It, yeah. I don't like distractions for records. If we want a day off, we want to go out, have fun. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. But it's like it, I, I like taking some of reality away. It, it helps like kind of narrow your thought process a bit. Mm. You know. Well, I wanted to ask you about something. Yeah, what do you got? I believe now. Th I I think this has been talked about on another podcast. So we don't have to get too in depth, but I, I wanted I want to bring it back because it's loose in my memory. You did a stray record, and yeah. you you did a thing where you played an amalgamation of horrible noises into the isolation cabinet. Yes, I did do that. And what was this called? What was the game okay. called? Um, this is so stupid, um, Colin. Do you okay, know this? So we had this. There's this thing called the death riff. Do, 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 do. It's just a shit riff that yeah. shit bands play. That you know. Yeah. Um, How does it go? Do 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 do. Here, pick up that sweet donable. <laughs> the R two V two. Yep, yep. That plays so good. And then, good. starting at the bottom string, go. Give me a seven eight seven eight seven eight seven eight. Oh. Go up the strings. Yep. That's it. So do 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 did it and then go back down. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's a, it's yeah. a garbage riff. Yeah. Um, so we just call it the death riff because it just makes you want to die. Anyway, um, yeah, we, I, Tom and the gentleman in Stray, we we like to gamble and um, we thought it'd be funny to place a bet on who could out last somebody else listening to like torture music in these cab ISO boxes. So we. <laughs> The, the whole bit in the short was we played the death riff, pitched all over the place, for whom the bell tells bass line, also out of tune. <laughs> over all that, people screaming, uh, everyone's 
stripped to their underwear, hands and feet tied, thrown wow. in the ISO boxes, completely black, kind of hard to breathe. Probably should have checked if oxygen was a thing, like beforehand. A little scary. And then we had a couple Mesa Boogies just blasting this, like, MP3 that we made. Like fucking Guantanamo torture music. And everybody had a little uh, cable. Somebody was sitting on the couch in another room. And when you tapped, you pull on the cable, and then somebody comes in to let you out. So, like, you don't know when the other guy leaves. Okay. So it's all right. Let, last man standing wins, wins the pot. And you um, don't know. So think about that. You don't Total know. Isolation, the yeah. Chaos. I think we all just- threw in, like, 100 bucks or something. It wasn't too crazy. Um, and then, yeah, I won, clearly. Because I could fucking stand any t- t- torturing me with music. It's, You're being tortured. It's my job. At work. Yeah, how yeah, long, yeah. How long clearly you, won. Yeah. How long did you make it? Yeah, I took a nap. Actually, that's oh. how I knew I won. I woke up from a nap and I was like, "Dude, I got this." Wow. And how, how long? Three were you hours. In thir- three hours, thirteen minutes, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, dude, yeah. I oh, you got to have fun. You know, you got to have fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could have beat you. I went to Alcatraz the other day. Yeah. Oh shit. You know damn well my first thought was I could have made it. Oh dude. Okay. I could have made it. It does. Spoon. It they when they I, I did a tour there once and when they describe like this prison was particularly brutal because you could hear the city. Yeah. Like on good nights, oh, you could just hear on people New Year's, out partying. The, you could always yeah. just hear people talking because of the wind and the fire. And it's just like oh, oh. That's so brutal. I could do it. I'm That's different. brutal. I'm different. Dude, I'm not much of a swimmer. I, you don't. You could make. You could make the swim. It's the current though that fucks no, you. No, I right? ain't worried about the current. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Believe me. <laughs> all right. Can be harder, I guess. I'm like, I'm like okay, yeah, right. swimming. <laughs> <laughs> like a regular swimmer, I can make. It. Yeah. Let's talk. Got, uh, let's yeah. talk. Better lovers. Yeah, please. Better lovers. Cool. Better lovers was. Uh, what formed out of every time I die, obviously. Mm-hmm. It was uh so pretty much pretty much after the split, those guys all all had intentions of continuing, you know, like the the four members of Every Time I Die that wasn't um besides the singer. Yeah. And uh they were just going, writing, doing things. I was still involved with those guys and bouncing music back and forth. Didn't know what the hell was gonna happen with that. You know, of course. Andy was like uh still in the mix. It, like they were just gonna do this band, find a new singer, wouldn't be called E Tid, we'll just move on. Right. Yeah. And um, you know, I'd been making records with them for a while now and it was like, cool, I'm in, whatever it's gonna be, let's just figure it out. That sort of progressed um to where like let's demo these songs. We got kind of like an E P that might feel pretty good and then we'll shop a singer or just like figure that out, you know? Um, and, uh, towards the end of that, they were like, yeah, Andy's not really involved. Don't know what's going on yet. We'll see what's up. And sort of up until like the day they were coming to the studio. I was like, is Andy coming? Is this going to be a thing? You know? Yeah. And, uh, love Andy. He's just, man's fucking killing it. He's on TV. Yeah. I think he, he was maybe holding out on kind of letting them know he didn't want to do a full-time band because of that too. And yeah, it was one of those things where it was like uh, everyone, lo- you know, everyone's so close and loves each other, and he's just like, I, don't, I didn't want to let you guys down, but I, I don't know if I can do this. Totally, so sure. They're like, all right, Jordan's got it. Jordan's a brilliant guitarist, and we just came in and made the record, kind of the those four songs without him. You know, not sure where that was going to go or anything, you know. And I was like, cool, let's try some singers out. At this point, I was just in the role of a. Buddy, producer, okay. helping him with songs, kind of thing, but I hadn't really. There was no talk of me doing the band. Mm. We weren't really sure if there was even going to be another guitarist. And, um, you know, Greg popped up as an idea for frontman. Uh, so they sent him some songs, and we heard a little bit back, and I was like, "Yo, uh, we should do this." <laughs> like, this is mm. Greg's a fucking animal, and um, that very quickly turned into like him signing up going to the studio, recording shit, and me getting these songs, as these songs were finally getting done and stuff, we just sort of like mutually flirting with the idea of if I could do the band and mm-hmm. stuff, and I was like, man, if Greg's in on this, I think I am too. Cause oh, wow. He's, yeah, and, and it became this like, all right, am I doing this fucking, am I <laughs> playing guitar band? or what? Yeah, yeah, are we yeah. doing this or what, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, But it was like, yeah, I got, you know, I was like, l- luckily where the world is right now, 
I feel like tours are happening. They're coming together further than records are. Used to be like, hey, we're, we're ready to make a record and then we'll plan touring. And now I get calls like, all right, we got our European tour here and this, so we need an album by this time. Yeah. So it's like- We got winter 2025 like, locked in. Let's get, <laughs> let's get started. Yeah. I was like, yeah. all right, well, if we can stay ahead on the touring and shit, I'll just- figure it out you know because mm. i was like I, I really like making music with these dudes and and um i saw this as an opportunity to like you know do a full-time band for probably the first time in my life which yeah. sounds crazy but like and it's not a full-time band everybody else has other stuff yeah. brendan's full-time with counterparts matt who drums is now full-time with the casey strain mm -hmm. you know jay jay opened a barbershop greg produces records like me like we're not touring 10 months out of the year yeah. it just can't happen you yeah. know and better Pure others passion. wants, yep. yeah. It's just for fun. It's just to get it out, you know. Play, play what we can do and move on. And better to lovers wants to go. And I was like, you know what? This is my last shot to do this. The way I was looking at it, forties fucking creeping up on me, and mm. I was just like, fuck it, I'll do it. I'll just, mm. I'll just go for it. I love, me I love hanging with these dudes and playing. And I was like, this will be the. This is. I'm looking at it like it's like, all right, I'm going hard for the last time with this world. Yeah, I do you see think you took any of your traveling for granted earlier in your life? I think when, so when COVID like stopped mm -hmm. and the world opened back up and went on tour like a bunch, which I hadn't done for a long time at yeah. that point. We yeah. did a full US tour, we did a European tour, you know, like we started to do shit and I loved it. I was like, man, I fucking love getting out of the house. Like who, who didn't of after course. COVID? Yeah, you of course. know, um, I think the first show back we played was like Furnace Fest. Mm. And I was just like, oh, dude, shit. I fucking love playing shows. Like, <laughs> what have I been doing? Yeah. You know, like, and, and then I was, so I was like, you know, that didn't go away, really. You know, it wasn't just like the honeymoon phase of that comeback. I was like, man, I fucking like getting out of this chair and and playing and fucking jumping into a crowd and going crazy. You know, and it's like, right. I, uh, it just like hasn't, it hadn't really happened for me full time ever. You right. know, I've done, I've made a ton of music. I've like worked on a million records, written a million records, but I never was like a full-time touring guy. And I was like, let me, oh, well, that's my, that's the fucking phase of life I want to be in now. You know? Mm, interesting. Um, it's funny how it works that way. Cause I'm, yeah. I'm like just now getting that itch again after being like, I'm, pr I'm pretty, I'm pretty good on even playing. You know? Really? Yeah, I, ah, dude. Shit. I thought I would never. I thought I would never do it again. I mean, I thought I'd play a show or two here and there with the side project, and that would be it for life. And then I was like, you know what? Let me jump into this. See if see if I'm missing anything in my life. You know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. It's been like really um, invigorating for me to be that active again with a band. It's awesome. When I when I come home, I'm more focused on records and yeah, yeah. I just love I it. I was really, really, really fortunate for the opportunity for that one. Pardon this interruption. We have some very special messages for you. Mm, Colin, what is that shirt you're wearing? This very sick into another shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> I got from Mad Vintage. Mad Vintage? What is that about? Mad Vintage is a website you can go to right now mm. to get badass vintage hardcore metal, punk, rock, mm -hmm. all of the et cetera tees. <laughs> That's right. He's got all kinds of stuff. It's all cool. It's got all the measurements on there. You don't have to worry about nothing. You have to know your own body, and then you got to worry about what you want, because he's probably got it, and you mm -hmm. better hurry up, because we're going to probably buy it before you. Yes. You can use code HARDLORE15 to get 15% off anytime. And he wanted me to say that he's also always looking to buy stuff. If you got stuff you're wanting to offload, hey, Mad Vintage might be your guy. <sighs> Keep an eye out. Maybe he'll have some stuff from my personal vault. Ooh. We'll see how I'm feeling. If you want to feel good all the time, you better oh. rock Mad Vintage. You know what else makes <laughs> me feel good all the time, Bo? You are a professional. I'll tell you I what. I know. Athletic what is Greens. Mm. AG1, baby. Mm -mm -mm. We're the biggest fans. Tell them about AG1, Bo. AG1 is unbelievable. It is a, a supplement that I take every single day. And it's right. as easy as an eight ounce glass of water and a little scoop from a jar. And that's it. A little scoop of yummy powder makes me require, I need less coffee in my day. I mm -hmm. have more energy. Uh, the, I was, my daily vitamin antioxidants, I'm, I was screwed before. Now, <sighs> guess what? I'm Done. unscrewed because AG1 <laughs> fixed me right up. I don't know what I would do without this thing, especially as a, as a part-time traveling show yeah. and as a traveling musician, yep. 
our, we, we work with what we got and generally what we got are soft, crappy bodies filled <laughs> with the worst stuff you can possibly intake. Yeah. AG1 changed that for me genuinely. And if you use the very special link in the description of this episode, it'll take you to AG1. You can get five free packets of AG1 that you can take with you anywhere that we are. I, I'm going to, we're about to go to Florida. I'm taking some with me. You will, you will. If you stop me at FYI, the first person that stops me at FYI and asks me for a packet of AG1, I'm going to give you one. Boom. So if and, whoever listens to this, if you find me at FYI, I'm going to give you a packet of AG1. And you also get a year supply of the vitamin D, vitamin K drops, which I was looking at my bottle today at, when I took my AG1. They really mean a year, let me tell you, because there's, <laughs> there's so much in there. It's unbelievable. Gorgeous. Today's episode is also, as always, brought to you by Manscaped. Mm, beloved. Listen, if you listen to hardcore and punk, you probably stink a little bit. Yes. It's a given. Yes. Manscaped is here to change that once and for all. Do you have body hair? Do you want to trim that body hair? Do you want to make your body hair less unsightly? And a little less stinky? Because mm. Manscaped is basically all you got in terms of that world. It's yes. all you need. It's all you need. You got a lawn, it's got to be mowed. You got to mm-hmm. escape, it's got to be manned. <laughs> your balls will thank you, withdrawals will thank you. Wow. We're coining terms every week here. Yeah, yeah. You got weeds, they need to be whacked. They need to be whacked, man. And for with code HARDLORE, you get 20% off and free shipping of the coolest stuff out there. Oh, my. the stinky person. Unbelievable. Back to the episode. I got some, uh, some shots out of a cannon for Will. Oh, Do shit. you? Okay. Yeah, I got some. Shoot them. What are your top three favorite guitar heads to record with? Top three guitar top heads. Top three. I like a classic 5152. That's oh. kind of my baby. Mm-hmm. Um, I like my Friedman JJ100, which is, is a pretty cool Marshall on steroids kind of yeah. amp. Right. Um, and then number three, I don't know. Those are like, those are probably my two. My two favorite by are a you lot, still, uh, and then it kind of, then it'll kind of depend, you know. Are you still sweet on the Archon? The yeah, he's he gets some love. I've been torn <laughs> with that actually, and I, I like playing out of it. We'll go, we'll go PRS for number three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are cool. you uh, are you a solid state man live? No, I'm a amp guy live. I'm running two heads into two six by twelve cabs like a psycho, and I love it. Yeah. Power. It's raw. How do the how do the Eaton guys feel about that? I feel like they were the ones that put everybody on to the like DI solid state heads. No, the Jordan's a Marshall guy. He okay, just runs good. two two eight hundreds and the two Marshall cabs. Him Fuck and his yeah. dad built this fucking weird ass Marshall cab. Yeah, our stage looks like a like a garage shell of amps <laughs> and cabs. It's awesome. Yeah. The when we toured with them in 2017, the the best live guitar tone I ever heard was they each had a Marshall going through powering a cab jordan had another marshall going into like one of those red box di splitter things mm. yeah, and then yeah andy used an arch on to do the same thing and front of house would blend the cab with the di mix that's cool we did um a similar thing this summer with the rigs they were pulling some lines well i think we did some uk shows like that um but uh yeah lately we've been just rocking two amps each it's been awesome is that not is that what you do for better lovers too yeah, that's the Better Lovers rig. That's the the N-Rig lovers is, um, the N-Rig we were using, um, we are both using 5150s. Okay. Uh, when I saw you, I, I didn't get a chance to actually see any of you guys, but I, I came and watched you guys play at the Salt Shed here in Chicago. Was that Under Oath? Yeah, that was the, the summer. Uh, that's right. That was that, that um, was that, that one. You guys yeah. sounded great. So that would have been Thank that you. rig. So that, that adds up. Yeah, that was like our so. fifth show ever, maybe or something yeah. like that too. We yeah. were pretty, uh, we were pretty green on the band now. So I'm looking. <laughs> you got to see it next year. It's it, it's it's better now. Yeah, I've yet, <laughs> I haven't. Oh wow, better lovers, better now. New album. It's better, soon. better, better, better lovers. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, were you a big Etid guy before working with them? Yeah, I've always been a fan of the band. I like all. I I like many versions of Etid. You know, from when. <laughs> they first started to where they are now. Um, yeah. So it was cool to hop into that timeline for sure. Is the, is the writing m- more uh, collaborative now is like, are you, are you in the mix big time as a writer? Yeah, we have a lot of, uh, 
it kind of works like and similar with me and Jordan because we're both we both crank songs out. So like he'll wow. do a few, I'll do a few. We'll do a bunch together. We're actually we're about to start recording new material. Wow. And we're just all gonna we're gonna get in a room and do it. Like uh, cool. Because I, I I've done so much writing for projects just in a computer by myself. It's pretty rare. It's weird. It's like I haven't had a band experience. Dude, <laughs> you know, like same. I was even telling them. I'm like, dude, I don't <laughs> even remember the last time I fucking sat in a room with all my dudes and and our shit and just wrote a song on the floor like that. You know. Same. Wow. It's, and so it's like damn, you forget that that's just the you're supposed to do it that way. It's conducive to making good art. Yeah, I mean, I like my tools. Like I'd like <laughs> Being able to isolate and get ideas out with a laptop or at the studio or whatever, but it's like there's some there's there's the other side of that too. Like cool shit can happen in a room with people. Nothing beats you know? a, a fella just playing some drums. Mm. Yep. And then you start riffing over that, and then they do a cool drum thing, and you go, "I'm gonna do a guitar thing with yeah. that cool drum thing." Yeah. yeah. Dude, yep. there. I, I actually think there's nothing better than when a riff is kind of figured out, and then the drum part completes it. Yeah. When yeah. the drummer figures so out, nice. oh, what if we do it this way? And you just go, oh, yeah. that's such how, a good feeling. How good is a good drummer? Where it's the best. just like. It's the most important oh, thing. Oh, uh, you finished it for me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's good now. It was boring when I thought of it. And now I it's I mean, good. It, all, it all hangs on that being yeah. the case. Yeah. I think I've taken Chris for granted. My like, I've only ever been in bands with Chris as the drummer. And I think he's a very good drummer, and I've I've like taken that for granted so much, you know. Yeah, Chris uh, is awesome. It's 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 very telling when you work like because I've seen the best and the worst. It's very telling when you get used to a good drummer, and then a bad drummer shows up, and it's like, oh fuck, everything's worse, and it's <laughs> your fault. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I mean, like that's it should be the foundation of the band. Yeah. The drummer being pretty good. And that's yeah. why other than other than a vocalist, it's number two yeah. for yeah. me of like why why it's sick. It, it yeah. is definitely drummers are a good drummer is is, is a gem. Yeah. That's why they're so hard every to find drummer's too. in four or five bands. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. You ask some best drummer to work with. Who would you say is like the most impressive guitar player you've ever worked with? Most impressive guitar player. That's tough. Actually, uh, there's a lot of. Them. I don't know. Everyone's got there's 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 dudes who have different skill sets. Of course, so it's hard to fit. It's kind of hard to pin one. Hit, you know? hit me riffer. Hit me with a riffer, and then hit me hit me with the noodler. So give me the the noodle carb heavy. And Shreddler the keto, of the year. The keto. The keto. Shreddler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shredder of the year. Shredder um, of the year. Sean from Dire is Murder is a is a big riff daddy. He's got a really good picking hand. Um, mm. and it's some speed on that that a lot of people don't. That mm. he's he's definitely up there for me. Mm, okay. I, I'm I'm a big fan. I like uh, and then there's like you know, I don't know. Other people have there's a lot of different layers to guitarists that make yeah. them cool. I like um John from this band Northlane that I work with for like sort of the out of the box creative stuff that he does with guitar. Mm -hmm. Nick from Night Versus, another band. You everyone should check out Night Versus if you have. Yeah, it, it sounds a very, like it. Yeah. It's a very, it's not a hardcore band, but it's a very talented band. He's got some tricks that no one does, you mm. know, where it's cool. like shreddy, but it's cool. You still like it. And yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't do a lot of wanky guitar guys. It's not tough. a lot of, tough. not a lot of s solo shredders. You yeah. Know. Uh, shout shop. out to Buzz from Unearth. He's a really good player. Dude, Buzz he is awesome. And he's yeah, a hell of but, a bags player too on Warp Tour. <laughs> he would fucking, him and, him and Ken would just send people home. They were yeah, so but good. Buzz can fucking Buzz can rip a lick. He's he's he got can, he's got he a few trip. he's got a few in there. Wow, yeah. hmm. that's fun. That's all you know. These are the things that only you get to witness so right. often. Yeah, right. I mean, you get to witness too. We I all do, get to I see do. these bands. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You can tell. I mean, that's part of one thing I really that I'm like now is almost mandatory if I'm going to work with a band is I got to actually see the band play or nice. at least get a video or something. I've I been tricked by that in the past before, but it's like, you know, when you see a band, if they're the fucking shit or not, yeah, you know, for sure. it's like, it's very, the, a live show can be very revealing in this Absolutely. world, you know? And I, I feel like take a lot of, 
I think it weighs a lot of me too. If I'm going to work with a band, I think in this visual age we're in, that's half Mm. the battle. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to be honest with you. I I suppose it's a good thing, but um, there's so many times I've read stuff like even about my band or I felt that way about other bands that I've grown to be a fan with. It's like, I didn't get it. And then I saw them live and it was like, Oh, okay. Now I I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I've, there's definitely been, uh, I've definitely been not so hot on a band then seen them live and been like, okay, I understand this now. This is now I get it, you know? And I think the other way too, or I've loved Mm -hmm. a band, went to see them (laughs) live and I was like, Oh fuck that band sucks. Like <laughs> maybe I don't maybe I don't like this band. Maybe I yeah. like that producer, you know. Yeah. Right. Oh wow. Yeah, Interesting. that's fair. Yeah. Ooh. So, but uh, yeah, before before I work with a band, I get I get a gauge of how hard my job's about to become if I can see wow. it first. That's good. Know? That's wow. research. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Like that. Research, Smart. You know? mm-hmm. Um speaking of Will Putney, the the guitar player. We have a question we like to ask all of our guests. Okay. The question is, who do you do? Meaning, let's say, I, me as a guitar player, I do Eddie Van Halen. You know, I do fucking Head Doyle. Yep. Okay. Who yeah, does yeah, Will yeah. Putney do? Who's the Who's the guy Fine. where you were like, this guy? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to implement some of this, and not just like visually, but just your your vibe. Who are you subconsciously pulling from? I'm subconsciously pulling from. The brothers and at the gates all the time, probably. Fuck when yeah. I'm, when I'm Sick. in fit. Um I'm uh I'm a little Kurt Baloo fanboy. Of course. So Who I isn't? like I like what what would Kurt do here? That kind of, that <laughs> creeps in every once in a while. You know. Shout out to Kurt. Love yep. Kurt. He's um, the best. I uh I, I used to pull more from like uh I kinda I kinda like the Russian Circles guitarist. I get a lot of inspiration from him. Cool chord progressions, love the tappy yeah. stuff. Mm. I do like I do pull some tricks from. Are they from, from here? Canada. I feel like I've tricks. Too. I've seen him bopping around. Yeah, but uh, Swedish. Yeah, classic Swedish mellow death bands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in flames, haunted soil work. So you're a Those Gothenburg like, man over a Stockholm. I'm a, man. I'm a I'm a Gothenburg man. Those are my early riff daddies gotcha. when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then if I'm looking I'm a for Stockholm a good man because they go you know? they go they go seven six. Three, two. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I like seven, is. six, three, two. <laughs> All right, I like seven, eight, four, one. But I love yeah, seven, yeah. eight, dude. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. <laughs> Bro, you fuck with seven, eight. Dude. I love seven, eight. <laughs> two, one on the A, and then three, yeah. two on the E. That's good That's stuff. Stockholm, baby. Yeah. You know what's so confusing at the great at the at the greats at the gates part is like a lot of the riffs are pretty pretty complicated. Um, I think it's. What's the first song? Is it Blinded by Fear? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the part that's... I always yeah, it's fucking fast. I yeah. always thought it was triplets. I thought it... It's not. It's just down straight picking. Oh, that's hard. That's even harder. Love that. It is it even is harder. harder. Yeah. We did, yeah. uh, the we did a cover. don't add anything there other than technicality. It doesn't and, and the chance for doper. something to... It can like yeah. fuck up we did. or something. Yeah. We did a cover of uh, Under a Serpent Sun this year. The Fit did for a split with uh, Thy Art and Malevolence. So we had to like digest that song. And it was fun. Just to kind of break down the riffs. Do a metal awesome. zone up just, just to give it yeah. all its glory. Yeah, and yeah. yeah it, was, it was cool. But it was like, fuck. There's there's a little little nuggets of good of like uh, master class shit hidden yes. in some of those songs. Big time. 100%. I mean, there are the, who is it in the band that's like a big time pop writer? In At The Gates? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. That's cool. Somebody is in there is writing for Britney Spears or some shit. What? No really? shit. No. I swear Can't to God. Be. Hang on. I don't know. Let's do, I, can, to- I can live research. At yeah. The Gates. Live Tumbo research. was the guy who- Britney Spears. Was like super cool to us. Talked to us a lot. Very cool. They're a very cool band. I respect that band very much. They are cool. We kind of, I have a few guys in where uh, collectively we're like, we, we punish people. Like, you know, you're, you're in a band, you get punished by fans and stuff. We like, we want to be punishers every once in a while. And they're the yeah. band for us. So if I see that, if I see that singer out or something, I'm like, I'm going to go talk to yeah. him and go fucking bother him. Like I'm going to do yeah. the thing yeah. that happens. And, and so we out, just, dude. we lay it to him. Thomas uh, Lindbergh. But they take it. Yeah. Thomas Lindbergh. Is Bass. a pop songer. Celine Dion. 
Uh, Salem, Britney Spears, what? Lisa Nielsen, Britney Spears again, uh, Nirv- Nirvana and the liner notes, Misery Index vocals. Uh, yeah, Ma- and Magnus Carlson. Wait, wow. this has to be two different Thomas Limbergs. No, it's him, dude. I swear. Check his wiki. <laughs> wow. I've got uh, that can't be. He's out here grinding need, like, on Britney Spears. Dude, bro. I need. Dude. I need. A, I need like so. I need a confirmation on this. Send a this text. This is crazy. Dumba. Send a live text to Thomas Lindbergh. Yo, Tommy. Big Tommy. You know L. Britney. The wow. sum of all your fears. Because I'm pretty sure a Swedish guy is like the the guy in pop. Yeah, world. yeah, yeah. But isn't that no? What's that guy's name? Thomas Lindbergh Wiki. I'm gonna look him up. Thomas. I'm looking at his wiki. It doesn't say anything about. Don't shut the fuck like up. <laughs> nah, man. I don't think so. I don't. No, it's it's got to be a different it's Thomas Lindbergh. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Celine <laughs> Dion, dude. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. I yeah. want to believe you, but <laughs> me. Mm. Mm. He must have taken it off himself. He don't want that out there. That's just yeah, yeah. Son of a Thomas, I, I'm my bad true. for exposing you, brother. If this was me making this claim, I'd be roasted. No, there's no roasting. It's him. You'll mm. see. All right, we'll, we'll see. Wikipedia, we'll see. anybody can edit that thing. That's the whole. That's in, the in, yeah, yeah. Wikipedia in, said it was real. So. It's the yeah. donors. In addition they to being, they're, they want them donations so bad, but they don't know that they took Britney Spears off Thomas Lindbergh's page, and therefore I won't be given a cent. Yeah, not getting that two dollars now. Well, in addition no. to being a prolific producer songwriter, he was a really nice guy. So. Oh, good. They kudos, are very kudos nice. to him. Yeah. Shout out to At the Gates. Good. Very good. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk eating. Well, he's got. He's special. You're vegan. Mm-hmm. I am vegan. Yeah. Now, 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 being vegan on tour is relatively easy. Yeah, it's fucking kind of awesome, actually. I. Uh, it's fun. It's I, I kind of tour to eat. You know, it's like uh, almost as cool, maybe cooler than the actual show part sometimes. So, oh, I, uh, welcome well, to well, our well. show. <laughs> welcome to yep. our show. <laughs> like to get to a city. I like to see where the spots are. You know, I'm big. Are- I'm not a party guy, so I take it out of my stomach. You know, and no. um, yeah. I'm a big eater, and it's been a it's been a great year of food all over the world. You know? <laughs> what are your what's some some big meals this year you've had? Mm-hmm. Some big. I'm a big Thai guy, so we actually went to Thailand, and that was, I think I had, we were there for two days, I'd say about 48 hours on the ground, I would have yeah. had seven to eight noodle dishes while I was there, <laughs> I mean, we, we fucking got it in. Um, we did Japan too, and yeah. we ate, uh, there was an, like a 24-hour dumpling place in Tokyo that we oh, ate vegan? out of fucking vegan dumplings. Yep. Oh, that's They're like, crazy. we got them. We got them as many as you want, and then we were there for a couple of days, and by the end, I was like, yep, yeah, uh, 40, uh, the veggie dumplings, and he goes, 20. I go, nope, 40. He goes, 20. I'm like, brother, 40. Trust me. Like, 20 left. It was just defeated. We we won. 20 left. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was, a, that was some good eating. I'm a, the, the Asian culinary uh, yeah. master class that is Japan is fucking I, I awesome. I bet... I bet the three of us would agree that New York, New Jersey have some of the collective best food available in the country. Yeah, what are absolutely. what are some spots that you love in that in that area? What are your spots? Vegan, your go to vegan spots? Yeah. There's yeah. a like the the best vegan restaurant I've eaten at is a place ABCV in New York. It's pretty bitchy, pretty expensive meal, but <laughs> yeah. uh, head chef's actually a hardcore guy. Um, there you go. Okay, there we go. Met him at a show, and he's like, "You should come to my restaurant." I'm like, okay, cool. And we show, we go, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, this is <laughs> the best meal I've ever had." He's like, yeah, <laughs> "Yeah, I'd love to stay tonight, but I'm going to Martha's Vineyard to cook for Martha Stewart." So you know, have a good show. And I was just like, "What?" So it is her vineyard. Lo- <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, I knew it. it's. Uh, but a- ABCV is uh, that's mm. the best meal I've had all year. So wow. Wow. Sh- shout out to fucking that spot for sure. <laughs> and then uh best vegan pizza is this place Pauly D's. If you frequent the Monarch in Brooklyn or yeah. St. Vitus, yeah. you're probably you're only like a ten minute drive away. I know oh, cool. just Justin from Close Cast could probably vouch for that place too. But he brought me a slice 
at uh, he we we usually get screamers, which is also a good spot. Mm-hmm. But he's mm-hmm. he's a food quest guy, so he brought both pizzas. <sighs> he's the OG. He yeah, is. and he's like, oh, I got you this, and I got you this too, and I'm like, cool, and then I'm I'm eating one, and I and I'm like, what what's this? This yeah. is something. This is another level. So that's Pauly G's for pizza, and then um, I like Peace Food. That's a good spot. Peace I got all food. the vegan food? spots. You, you just yeah yeah Peace Foods. Uh, it's just two in New York now, and it's just like they make their own. They make a steak out of mushrooms. That's pretty fucking wild. Mm. They do some pretty gnarly stuff. Will, are you a coffee guy? I'm a, I would say I'm a big coffee guy. You yeah. suck down a cup every now and then. I've been known to suck. I suck. <laughs> I'm a two. I'm a two a day guy. I love two? that. Yeah, I like. Just I like two. that. Two is when I'm when I'm going to bed after two. I'm like, why am I so tired? <laughs> yeah, and then I realized I, used I didn't to be, have my third. <laughs> I used to be like, uh, let's just let's just have a pot and fucking yeah. going all day. But now I make them bitchier, and I just kind of I'm just bitchier, one of those guys now. Funny. What just are your beans? <laughs> just, just fancier. I do the pour over. I get the good mm-hmm. stuff. You know, the but, when you um, go you out, the filth. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, the, the stuff whole e- every gimmick you could throw yeah. at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Cowboy. on all of it. Mm-hmm. When you go out mm-hmm. for a cup, where are you going? What are some coffee spots that you like? What's the snobbiest? In Jersey, my favorite coffee is this Anywhere. place, Mod Cup. It's in Jersey City. Um, we order beans from them. You might have had those beans at the studio. Probably but they're, did. They're yeah. a regular. Um, that's a good cup of coffee. I'm mm. like, uh, I'm big into Onyx. It's a good roastery. Onyx. Sweet Bloom in Colorado is pretty Back fucking fuck nice. Up. Onyx? <sighs> yeah. They got coffee now? Yeah. 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 Finally. They, Onyx, I think it's hardcore, Jason. They just did a- it is. They did like a Walrus Audio collab. Called, oh, there's, there's some shit there. They're, oh, there's, I was just joking. That's awesome. No, no, there's something, there's something going on there. There's a skull on a fucking logo <laughs> and stuff. Like they're, they're halfway there. I'm on yeah. my way. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> yeah, on my way. You had the yeah. uh, McPlant yet? I'm not a McDonald's guy. Fair. I enough. just fucking, I just fucking write it off. So fuck. Yeah, I know well, this you know is. What? I'm not, I, I know we were doing good. You know, Fuck. we were like, oh, oh, yeah, we got a lot in common, but we're doing we're doing <laughs> all right. Because something I do want to talk about is the the Gaza benefit stuff that you did. I thought that was amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was fucking pretty easy to make a little get a little money raised without too much effort. So I love that. Little, yeah, I pre- thank you to all the people that um, mm. that actually made the donations and stuff. We, we yeah, I don't know what the total was, but I mean, it's fucking thousands of dollars. It did a Fuck lot of. You mastering for that and, so that, and cool. you're i mean you're offering your time so that and that's yeah which is thousands of dollars yeah, you know? exactly yeah. yeah i mean it's, okay. it's one of those things where it's like i always get asked to do stuff cheaper than i normally quote so it was like cool there's an opportunity for people to get some work done cheap and raise money it kind that's of awesome. is a win for everybody for sometimes the best it's, the best cause in the world right now yeah sometimes mm-hmm. it just works out for everybody and then you get Get some refugees, some supplies, and Beautiful. I can get yelled at in my DMs. Are you fucking yeah, right. yeah. what? You don't like the fuck? F- them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but fuck um, them. yeah, it's uh, it was it was an easy one. I don't mind doing stuff like that. You know. Beautiful. Well done. Beautiful. I I I I love that. Mm. Thank you. Made me feel happy good. to fucking happy to. Help. You told me about the ghosts. You told me about who you do. You believe in aliens, Will? I do. I do. <laughs> I don't know what well, the fuck they are. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be, I don't, I don't think they're us. There were like some version of people that are going to, I just think it's got to be out. The odds are, you know, I'm a man of science. So yeah, sure. Sure. Something's out they're there. They're green yeah. or gray or something. There's no. There's something fucking weird. They're just they're like, it's, it, yeah, it's not going to be, we're not going to fucking have a conversation with it. You know, it's just going to be mm. some other thing. But it's there, yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. We got to get them in a yeah. band, you know. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite alien movie? Movie? Just like a movie about aliens? Because I'm a sucker be, for it a might good be alien Arrival. Movie. Arrival. Dude, I was gonna say Arrival. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Just think um, in terms of sheer rewatchability. Yeah, I I love it. I love the fucking language thing. I love the fucking the they're they're trying to help us because we're fucking humanity sucks. Like the it's got all the layers. Is so beautiful. It's like it's like the most human message. It's like if you if you knew it, it was all gonna go to shit, would you do it anyway? Just right. to yeah. enjoy the good times. It's beautiful. Um, I really like Contact. I think Contact's Contact's awesome. Good too. 
Yep. Contact's awesome. Contact has, as a studio guy, has one of my favorite like studio blunder in a movie. Oh, please gimmicks. do tell. Jo- do tell. There's a yeah. scene where Jodie Foster's like talking to the aliens, like they got the radio shit, and she's yeah. got a lexicon reverb, which is like a thing you would put on drums or vocals. Wow. So she's like turn, turning the dial to like get hear, hear to, the aliens yeah. coming through, and it's just, but they a, just uh, like they just liked in, the like graphics. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, yeah, some yeah. fucking prop yeah. guy needs to get fired. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a it's a Dude. classic fucking studio blunder in a movie. But that's I love... just an that's like an, only an audio guy would know. Yeah, that. it's just just me, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but isn't but, it uh, funny? Like movies when when there's a guitar player, like now I lose my mind, or yeah. like a drummer, I'll lose my mind if it's if it's not if it doesn't look realistic. And now like other things, like just as you get into hobbies, you're like look at something and it kind of takes you out. <laughs> The movie, yeah, you know? yeah, definitely but, took me out. I was like, the, the ladies turn reverb up. Like, what the fuck's going on? Brian, yeah. Brian, Brian. That's why I reverb. didn't. I didn't like that movie Green Room. Mm. Um, I liked overall. I thought it was fine, but the mm-hmm. like the integration with hardcore music and mm-hmm. like a playing at the Nazi bar, which is not happening. You're you're canceled right away. You're done, dude. <laughs> they played at a yeah. Nazi bar. <laughs> it's, you're, it's so over, you know? And then when they play at the Nazi bar, they cover Nazi punks fuck off, which, like, if you're going to play at the Nazi bar, I get it. But then they go to the next song and all the Nazis are moshing. Yeah, they're back. Yeah. You went, you they're won like, them yeah, over let's just with, keep it going. With yeah. one non anti Nazi song, you won the whole Nazi crowd. Dude, they don't music is that bad. Music yeah. is a weapon, dude. It's a powerful tool. It to changed my band. Dude. The the like death metal band that plays before them at the show is kind of sick though. Oh, yeah, it's like it, probably I, some I, straight up awesome band. It's probably it, it is it's some, or something. It's like some real death metal band and who are it was Dizma. They told they told Dizma, hey, do you want to play a Nazi band? They're like, yes. <laughs> yesterday yes, I discovered I discovered yesterday that McGruder Grind, uh, <laughs> McGruder Grind oh. is on Veep, the HBO show. Playing really? in a bar, really? Yeah, playing at the. I think it's the auto bar too. It looks like the auto bar, but That's I'm like, awesome. I'm, Veep's just on, and it's like some scene where like these fucking two guys go to the one of the, one of the like president aides likes to go to these like noise shows. Yeah, and then yeah. they go, and I'm like, I hear like three seconds of music come through, and I'm like, okay, that was a real band. That wasn't yeah. just like I was like, that was a, a legitimate blast beat with mm-hmm. the like. Right, ride action and shit. I'm like, I gotta find out who that was. Then I look it up, and yeah, they were like on Veep playing in playing in a bar. I was like, look at that. I was just talking about um, the extended Ace Ventura scenes where he sings for Cannibal Corpse last night. Oh, yeah. dude, dude, the also like TV sick. only version is like unbelievable. I like how pure so, that is. I like that that was just so Jim Carrey being like, I just fucking love Cannibal Corpse, so they're gonna I'm be re- in this movie. Yeah. Which is like I wish. Where where is that now? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Put put on, some on the bands very, on. You know. On the very last day of our tour with Cannibal Corpse, Alex Webster was hanging out in our room. Um, I think we had played, and he was just kind of warming up. So Hate Eternal must have been playing, and we were just talking. And I hit him with a Hey man, sorry. I know you've been asked this a thousand times, but like, was Jim Carrey cool? And he was like, Dude, he was the nicest guy I've ever met. Wow. It's awesome. He was just like Very really cool. welcoming, took care of us, super nice, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> just like, fuck yes. That's the best. That's I feel like I feel like I'd be cool if I was on that level. You kind of won life. Yeah. yeah you like right. I don't know, people who are like that successful and famous that are dickheads, I'll just never understand it. It's like, I know, because every won. single decision you you can make a decision every day to make someone else more successful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have the power to just constantly make people's lives. So it's like being a dick on that level, you like are you're you suck. Extra bad. Yeah. You're an inherent <laughs> dick. You're the biggest dick you I've ever seen. So Jim <laughs> yeah. Carrey, if you're watching, thanks for Yeah, thank you. Being cool. Thank Hell of you, a Jim year. Nineteen ninety four. Good job, Jim. Well, you know, we're winding down now. Mm-hmm. Will this was this was a blast. Really? Thanks, man. This was fun. Appreciate you guys. I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of the bands. You know. Oh, thank you. I'm a fa- I'm a fan of your love for Eat Down Concrete. So. You no, know, you know I'm on here every day. <laughs> Jersey won't be disgraced. I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Knock Loose and working with Knock Loose. Oh yeah, sure. Big time. They're dear friends Happy. of the show. 
dear friends yeah, of course. in my in my own heart. I uh Knuckles, um I got put on to them on their demo or like the two song thing that they had with all my friends, whatever that mm-hmm. was. I forgot what that was at this mm-hmm. point. But um I remember just hearing it and be like, This band's cool. And then they played was it Mixtape Fest? Was that the Long Island Festival? Sounds I remember real. the name. Yeah. <laughs> it was like some some short lived fest. I don't know if it happens anymore, but I remember there was like a day where like Etid and Stray and they were playing and I was like, I'm gonna go to the show and see what this band's all about. And then I remember leaving being like, I fucking have to work with this band. At okay. the time they were like they were they were like starting to like get some heat a little bit, but it was like pretty off under the radar still. But mm-hmm. I was like, we gotta figure out just a way did it, just a way to get them here and i remember like actually it was, it was, it's been a it, at that point it had been a while since i like went after a band you know oh um, cool and i remember talking to them being like yo i really want to do this record and i kind of see where this is headed and i see what the influences are and um yeah it's awesome i just fucking love those guys they're, they were like uh they're they're the right band to kind of carry the torch for that stuff for this kind of side of the world of extreme music because they're they're real dudes they put on bands like in the scene they like are it's like the good guys won you know jim carrey one of those yeah it's a real jim carrey situation it's a real jim carrey situation (laughs) yeah Yeah. because it's like yeah i mean there's even like (laughs) 10 minutes into talking to them it's like these kids are so nice they're gonna fucking you know if they could put the pieces together on this and that this is just gonna be a thing and yeah, I think, you know, the, a lot of their success is just like everybody wants to see them win too because they've mm-hmm. done so much solid shit for people. And yeah, they're great. What all did you record with them? We did uh, laugh tracks and um, what was Ooh. that? That would have been 2017, maybe. Was that? I don't even know, man. It's all a blur now. <laughs> when, wow. when was laugh tracks? Let's have a peek. I think. Um yeah, was it before us? 2016. It would have been before yeah. you, I think. Yeah. Wow. It came out I, in 2016. So maybe 2015 mm, we would have recorded that wow, or something. Interesting. I did yeah. not know that. And yeah, then you and then did. It just went, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's cool. I've been been uh, lucky to be a part of that trajectory with those guys mm-hmm. for a while now. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're that work you did with them lives mm-hmm. forever and... I would say definitely cemented you as the guy for any band trying to do anything like that. Yeah, I got hit up by a lot of knock loose bands after that, <laughs> which was that was kind of back to what I was saying before, where I was like, man, I don't, I want to give it to them, you know? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. uh, it is like a blessing and a curse when you make a record that reacts, you know, or a band that pops like that is like the, the copycats show up pretty quickly, you know? Big time. And it's, yeah, I try try to try to kind of reserve my energy for the right projects like that, you know, and, yeah. and steer clear some of that. But you know, I'm I'm happy that they got young kids into a style of music that was, you know, they like kind of brought back what I enjoyed about going to shows and stuff as a kid and seeing the scale of it. Now it's like, fuck, they might be like the biggest hardcore band ever. You know? uh, yeah, they're definitely on their way there, and and you're right, they're excitement and like enthusiasm towards everything that they're doing is the coolest part and their knowledge yeah. they listen to they check out fucking everything every band. yeah that that was what really grabbed me i was like man we're talking about like fucking prayer for cleansing i don't remember what it was but i was yeah. like yeah. how do you know this like you yeah. weren't even yeah. alive like how do you you know it, they would they would blow my mind a lot with like the encyclopedia of knowledge they had too on where shit came from right and i think really that cool. translates I think that's why their music is believable and real and stuff. It's like actually rooted in the right lineage of stuff. It's not just like uh intention I just and heard, ethos. You know, is, yeah, is you know everything. how it is. Yeah, it's all it is. That's all that matters. Yeah, straight up, dude. Now, if yeah. you tomorrow a band hits you up, a band you never worked with, to be like, "Will we want you to do this?" What What would you be most excited? To make what kind of record would you be most excited to make as a producer engineer? Like, do you are you dying to do some fucking indie pop music as a yeah right for a right. change or do you like staying in the has breakdowns realm? 
No, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm dying, but I, I just like bands that are good, man. It's easy. It doesn't have to be uh, a specific <laughs> genre or anything, you know. I've done some stuff, you know, I did some stuff with, like, Four Year Strong this year, which is, like, what, like a pop punk pop band, punk if you yeah, would sure. call it that. Yeah. But um, there's, like, really poppy songs that we've worked on that are awesome. I had a blast. As fun as the heaviest record I made all year, you know. And then um, did some music with that band, Northland. It's, like, a completely electronic song more you know and um it's like so i don't care you know if, if the band's good i'm in, i'm interested in in stuff that's just exciting because i there's anything that has its own sort of lane that i could relate to yeah musically yeah. thematically you know lyrically whatever it is if i can mm -hmm. find a connection to it and the band's good i'm stoked on it so now that's a perfect I'm, answer that's what I'm you want to hear yeah i don't really have like a you know there's not one path for me i don't think for producing records in the near future Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful sentiment. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, Will, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it, guys. This was uh this was a blast. Happy to see this. Happy to see the hard lore grow, man. Every thanks. time oh, uh thank you, there's brother. been countless bands at the studio who have you guys on in the background while we're tracking so this you is get for you boys. You get some play. Girls, now they everybody. get to watch this one. Imagine that. Yeah, wow. now when they come like you go and watch my episode yeah. and you're gonna <laughs> fucking listen. <laughs> Right, Get they're gonna pointers, hear that last bit you know? and be like, "Okay, guys, we got to be good because that's what he likes." Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, it's not really that hard. It doesn't sound no. that hard, right? Just, just rock. Don't, don't just you know? don't suck. Yeah, just rock. I don't know. Just rock. Yeah, Gorgeous. it's hard it's for some people. I love it. Not you guys. You guys are good. <laughs> you know. Well, <laughs> you know, there were bumps in the road to rocking. Mm. Yeah. Eventually, the plan is. is eventually rock. So yeah, yeah, will will help you eventually rock. Yeah, I do think everybody sucks for a long time. Yeah. So that you is a thing, to. too. I don't know how long. To. I mean, I I think I'm fine now, but I definitely <laughs> sucked for a, a while. Right. You know, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I think, the choir. <laughs> Keep yeah. preaching. Yeah. So if you suck, you it's okay. Because everybody Sucking sucks. is temporary. Yeah. Rocking yeah. is forever once you figure wow. it out. Wow. But, you know, Metallica, wow. if you're listening, you don't have to do the song twice. Do a nice mm -hmm. bridge. Yeah. Change it up. Call mm -hmm. Will yeah. Putney. Mm -hmm. Call me. I got a nice bridge idea for He's you. He's got good bridges. Thank you so much, yeah. Will. Thank you all for listening. We will see you next week. Bye. Thank Bye. you, boys. <laughs>